Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this review, we have a treat. We don't, I do, I have a treat for you. I don't know why I said we, it's weird. 112 Collective Mezco Wolverine. I figure with clothing on it, I never review these because I don't collect these. However, a buddy of mine, longtime viewer said, hey, I got this, would you like to borrow it for a review? I said, are you sure? Because I'm probably not going to say only good things about it. He said, yes, absolutely. I want an honest review on it. So here it is. I've borrowed it. We're going to review it. Now, the interesting thing about this is many people, from what I hear, are saying this is the best Wolverine figure of all time, uh, especially at this scale. And I'm gonna let you <laughs> I'm gonna let you know right now I don't agree with that. You're probably thinking, yeah, of course not. But watch the review and you'll see why because it's not even like subjective. I, I'm not even gonna count the clothing and stuff like that that I don't like personally. I'm only gonna talk about objective stuff as far as the ratings go. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. Before we actually get into the figure, we do have to talk about the packaging because this thing's 150, 155 bucks, something like that because um, it's some special edition steel case figure. It's just like a cookie tin. I mean, like it's not a special packaging. It's a tin. It's not like some kind of crazy cool steel case or anything. It's just a, it's just like a t standard tin that you get like a million of them for free at Christmas time because you're buying all kinds of cookies and things to hand out or to put out, whatever. It does have some nice artwork on it. Like it's nicely done, but it's still just a tin. Like a nice cardboard box I think is more appealing than this. But hey, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. We're gonna not set this aside too far because we're gonna use it as reference in a minute. Okay, now we can go ahead and talk about the figure. This guy stands to the top of his head, not counting the ears, just about six and a quarter, six and three eighths inches, and that's gonna make him, he's looking down, let's fix that actually. So he stands looking straight ahead. He's probably not gonna change it too much. Yeah, still solid six and three eighths inches, and that's gonna be, just about 16, 16.25 centimeters, right around there. So a little bit tall, I would say, a little bit tall. Okay, so we can go ahead and get into this. We're gonna do a real quick question of the day. I know it's dragging on, but we have to do that. So real quick question of the day, clothing or no clothing on your figures? I don't mean sculpted, I mean actual cloth. For me, it's always a no, I don't like it. It doesn't scale well. Um, I'm not gonna keep mentioning that in this because it is what it is. Like if you're buying Mezco, you know what you're getting. You're getting relatively good scaling for your clothing, but it still looks like Amigo. So I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. They're all wearing sweaters, but that's fine. Not gonna talk about that anymore after this, I promise. I'll try not to. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the aesthetic. First things first, I'm gonna talk about the proportions because that's fair play. I don't care what kind of clothing you put on it, you can put good proportions to the figure. And one thing that I've noticed across the board since I reviewed the uh, Dark Knight Returns or whatever the comic cartoon version of that Batman is, the Fat Batman, uh, that one was great. But they've all had very weird proportions in my opinion. Uh, I think it'd be easy enough to argue factually, but I'm not going to get into it. This one does too. His head is huge. His head is huge, his neck is really long, and he has no traps. It's very weirdly shaped. His overall proportioning is very strange and it really, really takes away from the figure. He's Wolverine, so he's supposed to be short and stumpy, but they've given him no real shape. He's very frumpy looking. This honestly does, and I say this a lot about Marvel Legends to talk about the low quality, non-accurate uh, looks. This guy, especially being in cloth, actually does look like a guy in cosplay. So uh, we're gonna talk about all the good details and things that they've done here, but I do have to say just at first glance, in a standard neutral pose, this guy does not look good. He doesn't look at all heroic. The big neck, the giant head, and the uh, relatively frumpy body, not working for me. Second thing I noticed, the skin tone is very yellow. Don't love that. Okay, that's just, it doesn't, it's very, very yellow. There's no shading, it looks very plastic. Um, this is a $150 figure. It looks very plastic. There's no paint on the arms other than the hair, which is acceptable. Um, now, the other thing I want to talk about as kind of a major thing is the specific look for this Wolverine. As far as I can tell, this is not a Wolverine that we've ever seen before. It's kind of like an amalgamation of different Wolverines. And if you're into that, that's fine. But for me, if I'm buying a Tiger Stripe Wolverine, I want it to just look like that. I don't care about other versions. I want the, the versions I'm buying to look like the version I'm buying. This guy's tiger stripes are so thin and unimpressive that it doesn't look good. 
to me. These side stripes being so skinny, it's, it's not a good look. Uh, the top ones are okay, I guess. But the other thing that's really killing me, especially with this bright yellow, is the darker blue. It doesn't look right. It looks weird to me. Super weird. Like, look at the box. I know he has been darker in instances, but usually with the bright yellow, it's the lighter blue. And then if it's more of the, like, macaroni, not macaroni, like, school bus yellow, I guess you would say. Not macaroni and cheese, that's orange. Um, school bus yellow gets the darker blue. To me, this is just a weird combo that doesn't work. The dark red belt, not loving it. The detail work is nice, but just all in all, I'm not seeing the appeal here. It's not what I would choose to buy for a Wolverine figure. Um, so there, there are some issues. Now, as far as the detail type stuff goes, like the black is put on there nicely for the stripes. They just don't look like the right tiger stripes. They're so skinny. Uh, the belt is painted well, sculpted well, no problems there. The detail sculpt work on the gloves is very, very nice. The paint work on the little things where the claws come out and the alignment of the claws, it's not good. It's not good. It, they, they're like Marvel Legends. The claws aren't coming out of the little shoots or whatever you want to call them. So that's a bummer. The boots are pretty nicely done, just like the gloves. Some detail work is fine there. It's really nice. Uh, the head work, detail work is, eh, I'm torn. Everything but the mouth looks pretty good. I don't like the mouth on there. This makes him look super old. Those really thick uh, creases in there. Not loving the sculpt on the mouth. Also, just like I said, the head is way too big for the body. Way too big. It's humongous, and it's not just the optical illusion of the ear pieces. It's, it's not great. And then the arms, they're not sculpted with very much muscle definition at all. I was honestly expecting so much more for the, from this figure for 150 bucks. Um, it's really unimpressive, basically in every way, honestly. Like, they clearly know how to sculpt. The detail work on the head is nice, the little wrinkles and, and things like that. But I, that's not an impressive, impressive looking guy. Like, he looks old and withered. And you can make the argument, it's Wolverine, blah, blah, yeah, I know, but that's not what he's supposed to look like in the tiger stripe suit. Lastly, for the aesthetic, the um, the way they connected the shoulder pads, it's strictly an engineering thing, but I don't love it. I don't love that giant block right there that makes the shoulder pad look awful. It's for the articulation, I'll show you that later, but having this giant block of plastic right here makes the shoulder pads look really bad, and he already has bad proportioning, so not. Uh, I'm just not thrilled with this in really any way. Uh, I'll do a quick comparison before we leave the aesthetic section. Uh, this isn't the one to compare against, but this is the only one I have handy and it's the same body. Um, for being 112 skill, Marvel Legends are already big. And this guy's even, even bigger by a whole lot. And like I said, this isn't the one I would choose, but there are a few Tiger Stripe Wolverines from Marvel Legends. They have been the best go-to figures for me for Wolverine so far. The Mafex brown suit's decent, but... I would go with either of those over this, strictly on the aesthetic. This figure right here, it's not working for me at all. So aesthetically speaking, for $150, this thing gets a 3 out of 10. It looks really bad if you ask me. The giant head, funny arms, non-accurate suit, dark blue, light yellow, the plastic. Like, it just looks really not worth $150 at all. Uh, it's like knockoff quality, if you ask me. Also, the face doesn't match the arms. Okay, so let's talk about the accessories. This is by far the shining moment for this figure. Like, without a doubt, the accessories are a big deal. Let's just talk about heads first. So we'll, we'll start with cowls. We have the cowl you already saw on him, the neutral face. Then we have one where his teeth are showing. That's pretty nicely done. I like that. We have a battle damage one, that, which is like halfway awesome, like really, really good. But then if you look at the mouth, they just have silver paint on his lip. His lips aren't made out of adamantium. His skeleton is. Why is there silver paint on his lips? So that looks pretty dang goofy, despite the rest of it looking freaking awesome. Then we have a yelling head, which is... It's nice enough. It's okay, I like that. In fact, all of the heads that aren't the neutral one look better than the neutral one. They all sit too high and they're all too big, though. We do have the first appearance look with the neutral mouth. That one looks much better, I think, than the regular one. Nicely detailed. It doesn't have the very heavy wrinkles, so I like that. Then we have the angry one. That looks pretty good. And then we have a couple of unmasked ones. They actually sit better on the body uh, than the cowl. So if you like that, that's cool. You have the one with the, like, kind of... I don't know, different, two different hairstyles. That's all I'm gonna, <laughs> that's how I'll describe it. Call them whatever you want. They're nicely done. I think they're fine. You have the cowl to hang on his neck when you have no cowl on his head, and that is fine also. So plenty of head options. 
not counting the size and things, they're very nice. They're very nicely painted, nicely detailed. Other than the yellow skin, they look really good. Uh, we do have an alternate belt. So we have the red belt, which is very nice. Or you can do the black belt, which is even better. I think that looks really, really cool, even though it doesn't really suit this look for my tastes. And then if you don't like the red X or the black X, you can put on his regular belt buckle for the red belt. So that's really cool. I like that. All right, let's talk about the claw hands because that's kind of a big deal for Wolverine. We'll start without the claws though first. We have two fist hands, three different grippy hands, and a pointy finger hand. And then for the claws, we have the fist claw hands, the clenchy claw hands, and the fisty bone claws. No clenchy bone claws, I guess they figured we didn't need them. I think that's more than enough. Um, these claws, by the way, are closer in style to the Hugh Jackman Wolverine than basically any of the comic versions that I'm familiar with. You guys can let me know how you feel about the claw style. I think these are fine, because they're not so pointy and spindly. I think they look good. I think the Hugh Jackman claws look really good. So I don't mind this. I think it looks okay. All right, speaking of claws, we have some slash effects, which are really, really cool. They are wonderful. At least one of them doesn't really fit on the claws properly for the one that I'm reviewing. Maybe it's a mismold, but generally speaking, they all work. They snap onto the claws sort of really well, like they stay in place well enough, and they look good. I like them a whole bunch, so I'm pleased with that. We do get a display of a battered up sentinel, and that's pretty cool. It has different ports for the uh, arm, the articulating arm for you to hold the figure with. And that thing's really nice. The arm is good. And the sentinel lights up. It's just basically the eye, the chest, and the other eye. It doesn't light up the way it showed in the promo images. That one had both eyes red. This one only has a flickering white light behind it. And you do get the removable torn out eye. Um, but it doesn't light up or anything like you can just see white flickering behind it if you stick it in there Otherwise Wolverine will just be holding it if you don't like any of that you do get the blue and yellow and black X display stand I think the upright is supposed to peg into there, but I can't get this plug to come out So I don't know and then lastly we get the little baggie like Figma does for the accessories so where they were lacking in um, aesthetic, they are definitely making up for it in accessories. If you are a person that likes accessories and don't really care about the aesthetic so much, which would be weird, but if that's the way you are, this is the figure for you. 10 out of 10 for accessories. They're wonderful. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the articulation. They've done some things pretty nicely. Now granted, because of this guy's arms being bare, they didn't have to do as much with the clothing as they normally do, and that is definitely to the benefit of the articulation. So we have some double ball pegs in the neck and head, and it moves around really well, but it does demonstrate how big the neck is and how big the head is and how it just doesn't look appropriate for the body. So like once you pose him, you could pose him like that, and it gets the head down way closer to the body, and it looks much better, but that's like not that's not normally how it is. You have to really scrunch it around to get it to be like that. So it's definitely a bit of a bummer, but you do get decent range. So if you're willing to try to pose it to hide these issues, you can probably hide most of the art, um, anatomy issues, but we still have to talk about them. So the shoulder pads, like I said, they have this weird plug over here, and that's because there's a ball peg and a hinge combo in there, and that allows you to slide the shoulder pad up onto the shoulder like that, and that'll let, let you get the arm up even higher, presumably, let's see. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't, it can't go any higher than that. So you get the arm up to just better than horizontal, so that's fine but it doesn't, it doesn't go up any higher than that. So you can leave that down. So that's dumb, but <laughs> why? Why does it do that if you can't use it? And it rotates with the arm, which is nice because the arm's on a ball peg and this is connected to the shoulder. So it rotates with the arm. So you can just leave that down and rotate. Like you don't have to do that. You don't have to use that hinge at all. So that's super weird that they did that hinge. I didn't even realize it didn't work. Huh, all right, well, what do you know? So you get your full rotation, it goes up better, just to better hor than horizontal. Bicep swivel is okay. The way it's shaped is not great though because it fights against the, so the shoulder ball. So that could be better, but I mean, it's just 150 bucks, oh my goodness. I was expecting so much more, because I haven't reviewed a Mezco figure in a long time. I was expecting so much more for the price point. And I know like the regular Wolverine's only 80, but that's still $80. That is top tier six inch action figure and um i'm not seeing top tier stuff so far elbow is okay a little bit better than 90 no problems there it's a decent looking elbow the wrists are on ball hinges that are appropriately sized so that's good torso has a few i believe it's a diaphragm and a lower torso could be single could be double can't really see in there obviously but it moves around pretty well he leans back that far 
which is not bad. And he leans forward only that far, which is bad. Doesn't lean forward very far at all. You do see some musculature under there, like abs and stuff, but barely. It really does look like a muscle suit. Um, leaning to the sides, not bad. It's all right. And then of course you do get some rotation, not a ton. So very limited, which is usually the case for clothed figures. That's not surprising. Belt is a, float <coughs> a floaty piece. So you can readjust that as you need to. His trunks are a separate piece, obviously from his pants. So that's another thing you can adjust. Now going out to the side, we get just shy of full on splits, which is pretty damn close to full on splits. So that's good if you like that, you got that. No problems with the pants at all. Bringing the leg forward, everything flexes and stretches nicely enough. So you can get the leg to just shy of perfectly horizontal. That is fine. Going backward, barely any backward. We're gonna have to do this. I only normally do this on McFarlane figures, but we're gonna do a cake rating because he's got no cake. He has zero butt, like zero, zero butt. This really is starting to look like a cosplayer because anybody who's as muscular as Wolverine would definitely have some glutes. They're like one of the most important muscles in the body when it comes to uh, athleticism. He's got zero, zero. He's got a case of no ass at all. Okay, so let's see, do we get a thigh swivel? We do, it's fine, that's good. Double jointed knee is gonna work like a double jointed knee. It does stretch the cloth enough that you can see inside a little bit. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell, but definitely would prefer not to be able to see inside, but it works well enough, a little bit better than 90. There is no boot swivel as far as I can tell. It's just gonna be down here in the ankle, which seems to me to just be a ball peg with very limited range. I mean, it's good enough, but it's not a lot of range. It's not loose or anything, so that's fine but it's just it feels like a single ball peg no toe hinge no ankle rocker nothing so very limited so not all because of the clothing his articulation is not very good the clothing doesn't really hinder it too much it's just a matter of the engineering is not for, there for a lot of dynamic posing so it's going to be pretty hard for you to pose away the proportion issues uh i think um, obviously some people are going to be doing it. They're going to be spending a lot of time posing a figure for photography or whatever. But for those of you who are relatively casual collectors that just buy figures to enjoy them, I think you're going to have a little bit more trouble enjoying the articulation on this guy. So yeah, it's not great. I'll give the articulation a six. It's not bad. I'll go seven. It's not bad. It's just not good. So now almost a 20 minute review. It's time for the final rating. Uh, I'm sure I've upset many, many people who are diehard Mezco fans. And that's not the goal of a review ever. I have to review the things as they are, not as somebody who loves this line or loves clothing on their figures or whatever the case may be. Everything I've said is uh, is objective other than things like, I can't even think of something I said that was subjective on this. Um, I guess I don't like the, the belt or some of the colors, but even then there's enough objective quality there that it's like, you can't really argue it. He should be lighter blue with the lighter yellow typically. And I think this doesn't look good. So that part's subjective. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so final verdict on this figure for $155. Like, yeah, the accessories are awesome, but if the figure doesn't look good or doesn't pose that well, then they don't really do much. So I'm gonna give this a five out of 10. And that's pretty generous. The awesome, awesome accessories bumped it up a few points, but the proportioning is just too bad. Posability is not there and it just doesn't look good. The skin tone, the plastic arms, the giant head, you're not gonna get away from that. Like the detail sculpted into the head, the cowl, is not anywhere else on the figure. Like the gloves are kind of detailed and the boots are kind of detailed, but the rest of the figure just looks so cheap and unfinished compared to the head and they don't match. So I'm if I bought this, I would be thoroughly disappointed. It's nowhere near worth $150. Just like Marvel Legends are nowhere near worth $30, this thing should not be anywhere close to 150 bucks. That's nuts. That is nuts. So there it is, guys. Let's talk in the comment section below. All of you people who are really, really, really mad at me because I said a Mezco figure wasn't worth the money, let me know why. And all of you who are just indifferent and looking for reviews, let me know what you think about everything I said and about the figure. And we'll talk down there. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, Keep collecting.